What's happening everybody? By the end of this video, y'all are gonna have pro level knowledge on everything related to flounder so that y'all can maximize your time out here on the water catching those tasty, ugly fish that we love to catch called flounder, fluke, in the northeast, flatties, doormats for the bigger ones, or what we just like to call them, flounder. So let's not waste any time, let's get right into it. So the number one thing with flounder is flounder are ambush predators and they feed on the bottom. They're a flat fish, they lay on the bottom, so they lay in the sand, the mud, and they get here tied to these jetties, rocks in the structure, and they ambush their prey as it swims by on the bottom. So you have to fish the bottom. So what these flounder do is they lie on the bottom just like this. So they've got their, let's see if you guys can see this, they've got their two eyeballs right here Right where my fingers are and the way that these flounder uh feed is they swim like this shows your stuff there you go so see the motion of their flounder so they swim so when a bait comes by he's gonna come up he's gonna open his mouth open up buddy ow he's got sharp teeth so the berkeley gulp just bounces off the bottom and what he's gonna do is he's just gonna come up and he's gonna bite it so that's that's how they feed. So what we fish for flounder is gonna be jig heads. We fish uh, for artificials, we fish jig heads, we bounce them on the bottom. I've got a 3 8 ounce jig head right here with the Berkeley Gulp uh, soft plastic. And then for live bait, we're gonna be fishing, uh, this is actually a fish finder rig, which also sits on the bottom. It's just a egg weight sinker, two way swivel, and then we've got a foot of leader line, and you've got your shrimp, uh, finger mullet, your small bait fish that you're gonna have on the end of this hook right here, and you're gonna be just dragging it and bouncing it off the bottom. So later in this video, we're gonna be talking about uh, tackle and the technique for working your bait, whether it's live bait or artificial. Let's first get right to it, and let's talk about what flounder associate with and how to locate flounder. So as flounder are an ambush predator, and they lay flat on the bottom, they are gonna be looking for areas that they can ambush their bait. And their bait is pretty much smaller fish. So it's gonna be mud minnows, gudgeons, mullet, smaller mullet that we call finger mullet, uh, pinfish, um, even shrimp is very, very popular for flounder. Really anything that's smaller swims on or near the bottom or around these rocks is gonna be something that flounder are going to eat. They are very much so opportunistic feeders, just like all of our other inshore species, redfish and trout. Flounder um, will associate to structure and current. So right here behind me, we have this nice long jetty. We've got this inlet right here, and this is a prime area that will hold flounder because it provides many opportunities and areas that these flounder can sit and ambush their bait. So these flounder are gonna also be tied right up to rocks, even a random piling in the water, a dock. Um, bridges are excellent, uh, bridge columns. Any piece of structure is going to hold flounder. Yeah, so grass flats absolutely hold flounder and areas uh, around grass flats, even drop offs near a grass flat. Near shore wrecks, great example. Bridges, any bridge is gonna hold flounder and trees and laydowns are just a few examples. But also with flounder, uh, that's gonna be a little different from a lot of our other inshore game fish, is we're gonna be paying very, very close attention to the topography. What's below the water that we can't see and what the ground is like below the water. So drop-offs, small holes are going to be very, very important when locating flounder. But also with flounder, uh, that's going to be a little different from a lot of our other inshore game fish is we're going to be paying very, very close attention to the topography. What's below the water that we can't see and what the ground is like below the water. So drop-offs, small holes are going to be very, very important when locating flounder. Even just a small drop-off, it's like a six-inch little drop-off is an area that flounder are going to position themselves on the bottom and when you know any bait swims by that they can ambush that bait. So again, these flounder are structure oriented fish, both the topography. So if you're fishing off the beach or a pier, piers are awesome because piers provide an ambush opportunity. Flounder, they will literally put their head right up against a piling 
whether that's on a pier, a bridge, or a dock, even grass flats are areas that we want to look for flounder as well because we also want to be looking for structure and just like all of our other game fish, any areas that provide life or what we like to call a biomass, which is life, and that's you know going to provide flounder their bait. Oyster bars are excellent, but with flounder, we also want to be looking for sandy bottoms and muddy bottoms that are going to be near or on places like this jetty. So this jetty, we have these rocks and this riprap but then next to that we also have sand and that's going to be areas that flounder can literally bury themselves in and ambush their bait so flounder will be right up on the rocks and in the rocks they're going to be very close to structure so you're going to get hung up you're going to get snagged and you're probably going to lose tackle when targeting flounder that's okay you're just going to have to accept that fact and that's the price that you pay for catching what we like to call the larger flounder or the doormats so flounder are great because you can catch them on offshore wrecks miles off the ocean and then also one of my favorite ways to target flounder and any inshore fish is going to be shallow water flats wade fishing uh, so you can even catch them on a grass flat or just a shallow flat just like you are trout fishing and redfish fishing so flounder are also going to be around those because anywhere where there's gonna be life, there's gonna be their smaller bait fish that they can feed on. When you're fishing off the beach, you wanna be looking for drop-offs. You wanna be looking for sandbars, sloughs, deeper areas that are next to a shallow like sandbar. So just because you're fishing for flounder in shallow water uh, does not mean that you can't catch large flounder. That is not true at all. So again, you guys, what we're gonna be looking for with flounder is we're gonna be paying a lot of attention to areas that they can ambush their bait. And that's gonna be current. So where you have like a strong moving current next to slack current, that's gonna be an area that we're gonna be looking at. I don't know if I mentioned docks yet, but docks are also amazing. Like deep water docks are great, as well as shallow water docks. If you have a dock that's like right at the mouth of a creek or a dock that's just near a deep drop off or near the main channel, um, that's going to be a dock that you also want to target as well for locating the flounder. Okay, so for targeting flounder, let's now talk about the tackle and some of the bait that we're going to be using. The first thing I want to show you all for live bait is this right here is what I like to call the guide special because it's just a sure bet. This is the fish finder rig, Carolina rig, same thing. And all you've got is your egg weight sinker right here. This is a half ounce egg weight sinker that I've got on my main line so it can slide up and down. I've got a two-way swivel right here, so that allows me to tie my main line to the two-way swivel and stops the weight. And then what that's going to allow is the bait to sit on the bottom. And then I've got about a foot to a foot and a half of leader line. You're going to want to use about 10 to 20 pound test leader line. I've got this small bait holder hook right here, and this hook is ideal for um, you know hooking uh, shrimp. Uh, you know your finger mullet so you don't need a giant hook for these flounder typically when you're hooking a finger mullet here's some footage of us hooking some down in Savannah Georgia and uh, so we're not using big hooks for those uh, finger mullet as well you're just gonna hook right through uh, their bottom lip it's very simple and it's very very effective again what's it what it's gonna allow you can fish this over structure uh, near and around lay downs and structure as well you can dead stick it which means you just cast it out and let it sit or you can also work it back to the boat egg sinker yes yeah, so we've got an outgoing outgoing tide right here and this live bait uh, the way you work it we're just kind of it's not like bouncing it or anything you just kind of lift it up off the bottom or you let it bounce it that's right oh I have a fish you that's a nice fish right there all right you guys first fish on feels like a flounder Perfect, into the boat. If you guys just have one rig to fish for live bait, it would probably be this one. The other thing that you can also do is take just a jig head like you would for artificial and you can put on that um, a shrimp, a live shrimp on that as well. So uh, this is a Berkeley Gulp shrimp, but if you also have live shrimp, then you can put that on a jig head 
same thing. You can dead stick it, you can cast it out, let it sit on the bottom, or you can also work it back to the boat just like an artificial as well. So that's your live bait. For artificial, uh, yeah, this is the number one thing that we're gonna be using is just a jig head. This is a 3 8 ounce jig head. I like to use this jig head more times than the other sizes because it's gonna allow that bait to sit on the bottom. You always wanna have contact with the bottom and be able to feel the bottom when you're flounder fishing. If I'm fishing shallow, like less than five feet, I'm gonna be fishing a quarter ounce jig head. If I'm fishing those really shallow grass flats, which I love when I'm weight fishing, it's probably gonna be a 1 8 ounce jig head or it's going to be a popping cork. So a popping cork is also a very effective flounder fishing lure and rig. Even though it's going to suspend your bait off of the bottom, if you're fishing, say, in two to three foot of water, then I'm going to be using a popping cork as well. Here's some footage of us um, catching some good sized flounder using a popping cork in a shallow flat. So don't think just because a popping cork suspends your bait that you know, you're not gonna catch flounder off of it. Flounder will swim up and they will ambush your bait. I'll also use a popping cork when I'm fishing really close to the rocks or up against jetties near shallow bridges where you have like bridge pilings next to some rocks. That's where I'm gonna be using a popping cork as well for flounder. And for a popping cork, I'm gonna have a quarter ounce jig head below that with my favorite soft plastic either a Z-Man or a Berkeley Gold. If y'all wanna get really crazy, then you can do a tandem rig. You've got one jig head that's on the bottom, and then you've got another jig head that's gonna be about you know a foot above that. So you wanna do a 3 8 ounce jig head, and then I've got a 1 8 ounce jig head above that. We're gonna have a separate video on how to make a tandem rig, but tandem rigs are highly effective as well. So as you can see, it's just small bounces, you wanna make sure that you're always having contact with the bottom, always. You don't want too much slack in your line, but you also want to make sure that your bait is on the bottom. And the way that you make sure that you have contact with the bottom is that you can, you can feel the bottom. You can feel your lure hit the bottom. You can always see there's slack in it. So, you know, you can have a little bit of slack, but not too much. So I just like to give it a few seconds for it to sit on the bottom. And then the first few jigs, I'm just gonna jig it. Maybe just a few little twitches of the rod. And I'm gonna reel down, make sure that I regain that line so I can feel the bite. When you feel the bite, you do not need to set the hook like crazy. I just like to pretty much reel down on the fish and let my rod bow up and just keep that line nice and tight. But I love this lure just because it's so easy to work. It, it really just kind of, is that a fish? Sure is. That's a decent fish. Oh yeah. Definitely a keeper. Oh, that's a slime out, yeah. <clears throat> so the other, um, the other popular way to catch flounder is gonna be vertical jigging over like offshore, near shore wrecks. And for that, it's gonna be using a bucktail. Um, this is a two ounce bucktail, but sometimes like out here in the Chesapeake Bay behind me, and you're fishing water depths uh, up to, you know, 40, 50 foot plus, then, and you're fishing in strong current, some people are using as heavy as a four ounce or even more uh, jig head or a bucktail for that as well. And a, even a 10 inch flounder, you guys, has no problem getting their mouth around this larger profile bait right here. So don't let the larger profile bait fool you. Okay, so now let's talk about the specific artificial lures that I like to use for catching flounder. So when you guys go to the tackle shop, that you can kind of use this as a guide, not get too overwhelmed. So for flounder fishing, I really do like Berkeley Gulp just because of the scent that Berkeley Gulp has. Um, you do pay a little bit more for it. You do get a lot of tail biters, but I do like to spend that extra money for Berkeley Gulp, especially for flounder fishing. So I also do use Z-Man. This is the Minnow Z. But when you're using Z-Man, um, you do want to use Procure. Anytime that you're using Z-Man for flounder fishing, you want to use Procure. So I've got mullet and then I've also got shrimp. Really, any flavor is gonna work as long as you have some juice. Um, even when you're fishing bucktails, 
you guys want to be juicing up your bucktail with Procure. Again, it's going to allow that flounder to, um, you know, just suck your bait in more and to kind of take it deeper so you're going to get more hookups. So I like these Minnow Z's right here. Um, I love these Berkeley Gulp swimming mullets. If I had to rank my favorite flounder fishing lures, number one would probably be the swimming mullet. This would be my favorite right here. Uh, it just has a great action in the water. Second would probably be the jerk shad, um, just because this has some great action as well. And the scent for Berkeley Gulp is really strong. Third would be the Berkeley Gulp shrimp. Uh, New Penny is my favorite. I use this anywhere from Florida, um, you know, up the East Coast. So I do love the Berkeley Gulp New Penny shrimp. Uh, I fish this on a jig head, fish this under a popping cork. Um, you can fish it on the tandem rig. So um, absolutely love the Berkeley Gulp shrimp. And then number four would be um, the Z-Man. Um, these, again, just have an excellent profile to them and action as well. So anytime I'm fishing this, I'm definitely gonna be uh, you know, juicing it up with some Procure mullet.